Impossible Whopper with a patty made from plants. Only at Burger King. Introducing Beyond Fried Chicken. Only at KFC. It looks like scrumptious chicken and tastes like scrumptious chicken. But it's not chicken. It's made of plants. And presto, plant-based fried chicken. Juicy charbroiled burger with a patty made from plants? Only the folks at Carl's Jr. can pull out something that bold. All the legendary flavor, none of the meat. <laughs> Hippie doing yoga by the beach, eating a fast food, plant-based burger. Is this the aspirational muse that big food wants to sell us in terms of what it means to be a progressive, health-conscious consumer? Hey there, my name is James Lee. Welcome to my channel, 5149, where I talk business, politics, and society. And today, I want to talk about vegan meat. And I want to examine it from a few different angles. Like, is it actually better for you? How has big food hijacked veganism in recent years? And explore a little bit the changing relationship between progressivism and big business. Beyond Meat has successfully found a better way to feed our planet by redefining meat and building directly from plants. We can go forward and enable consumers to eat what they love. That allows us to do that in a way that's protective of their family and their health, protective of the climate, protective of natural resources, and ultimately of animal welfare. Together, you have helped achieve Beyond Meat's mission to create the future of protein. Beyond Meat's one of the largest brands leading the way in the vegan meat business. And their marketing, at least to me, is cloaked in this aura of healthiness and sustainability. The Beyond Burger is a plant-based burger that looks, cooks, and satisfies like beef. It has all the juicy, meaty deliciousness of a traditional burger, but comes with the upside of a plant-based meal. They say it's 100% plant-based protein, no GMOs, no gluten, no soy, and it's kosher. They're hitting all the right notes, but is it actually as good for you as they say? I'm about to read an excerpt from a recent article published by Harvard Medical School's Harvard Health Publishing. Quote, the protein content of these newer plant-based burgers has been created to compete with beef and poultry gram for gram. Both the Impossible Burger and the Beyond Burger have comparable amounts, the former deriving protein mainly from soy and the latter from peas. The bad news, meatless burgers are heavily processed and high in saturated fat. Along with the ambition to replicate hamburgers comes with a comparable amount of saturated fat. Since diets higher in saturated fat are associated with increased rates of both heart disease and premature death, they may not be the type to opt for if your ambitions are purely health related. They are also a significant source of sodium, particularly for those on salt restricted diets. So the health profile of these plant-based meats in reality isn't as squeaky clean as the marketing makes it out to be. So what do you do in this situation if you're beyond meat, you know, looking at this unfavorable review from Harvard? Well, the answer is obvious, of course. You commission another study from another university. Beyond Meat Inc. is turning to academia to show that its plant-based products can be part of consumers' pursuit of a healthier diet, establishing the Plant-Based Diet Initiative Fund with Stanford University. Beyond Meat has partnered with the Stanford University School of Medicine for the five-year effort that Chief Executive Ethan Brown says will both inform the company's innovation efforts as well as the public. I guess we'll see how that study goes, but the point I want to make is that this is big business. Huge. According to some forecasts, the market value of plant-based meat will triple in just a few years to an estimated global market value of $35.5 billion by 2027. And because it's big business, the desire to sell more and more vegan burgers and other plant-based meats because your investors and shareholders demand it, supersedes other priorities and forces what might otherwise be a well-intentioned company to make sacrifices uh, that may compromise their purported mission and values. Inside a state-of-the-art research lab in LA, the sound of a sizzling grill. This is Beyond Meat, where CEO Ethan Brown wears a t-shirt. Right, so he wears a t-shirt to work, AKA is cool, he's chill, progressive, you know, not like a, a regular old crusty looking CEO. Now, before we talk science, let's just bite in. Wow. I mean, the consistency feels like meat. Like we're getting closer and closer. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the main reasons why his no meat burger had one of the juiciest IPOs in two decades, more than doubling its price on the first day. The way it works, a lot of reverse meat engineering using only plants and finding a growing appetite among consumers. You move from Whole Foods into Kroger, you start to see the mainstream acceptance of this product. And at some point, it becomes a movement. A movement, that's a powerful word. So I want to take a few moments to make a few observations about this movement. This is from an article by Mary Harrington. 
big business really does use scientific discourse to launder the reputation of deeply questionable food additives in the name of profit. In other words, the evils of junk food stand for the evils of big business and a scientific establishment seemingly in hoc to its commercial interests. In practice, the critique of processed foods is a profoundly anti-capitalist, anti-technology one. But now the modern left has expelled anti-capitalist, anti-technology voices entirely, instead embracing science, technology, and big business as key delivery partners for its vision of utopia. I think that's an interesting observation. And perhaps just to clarify, I think when she's speaking about the modern left, it's in reference to this kind of gentrification we see in today's democratic, or at least the establishment democratic party. I'm speaking in stereotypes, of course, but imagine a kind of professional managerial vegan hippie who lives in a big coastal city, works in tech, cares a lot about social justice, but at the same time, also very comfortable with big businesses' outsized role in influencing modern politics and society. And as the progressive worldview has become more monolithically elite in class terms, it's also lost its antagonism to big business. Unsurprisingly then, that the food industry is falling enthusiastically on new ways to dress the marketing of ultra-processed foods in the garb of scientifically endorsed health, which now gives it a progressive sheen. You know, I think because of shifting demographics, I'm speaking of the decline of the industrial working class along with the rise of the more socially conscious professional managerial class, that has sort of brought about this coziness between progressivism and big business and has elevated the idea that big business can be a conduit to making the world a better place to live. Except the problem is corporations by and large, again, this is just an observation of mine, but they make decisions based on looking at spreadsheets and financial statement line items. There is no holistic evaluation of balancing enterprise with something like societal health or harmony. But because consumers want to be more healthy in general, they will concoct a marketing campaign like this to make you feel a certain type of way. Full disclosure, I'm not vegan, but I'm still interested in decisions that I can make in my life to be a bit more healthy. So when this plant-based meat trend really took off a few years ago, I actually for a period of time started ordering Beyond Meat and Possible Burgers and things like that at restaurants, thinking it was doing me good. So I guess my point is that it's really important to scrutinize the source of information and the financial incentives driving certain marketing campaigns. Like, you know, of course, by all means, eat whatever it is that you wanna eat, but you know, think about your goals and theirs and whether or not they align, right? Is their goal your health or is it to sell you another burger patty? You know, I'm gonna do my best to continue to try to parse through all the BS that's out there so I can make the most conscious decision I can. And hopefully this video can be a part of that journey for you as well. Those are my thoughts of the week about vegan meat. I'm very curious to hear yours, so please share your thoughts and ideas in the comments section below. Uh, tell me what else, um, you know, what other topics you want me to explore. If you've enjoyed this video and want to support my work, please take a quick second to click on that like button, share this video with uh, other people, uh, subscribe, hit that notification bell icon so you don't miss any of my future videos. As always, thank you so much for your time, and I'll see you next week.